I might use the terms VxRail and vSAN a little bit interchangeably because they're very similar. Obviously, VxRail is an appliance. It uses vSAN as, as their backbone, but we do have a lot of customers that, that like to deploy or deploying vSAN standalone. So you might see me use those interchangeably, but again, really it's kind of the same limitations, right? So I had mentioned this before, Not the, you know, the first point, you know, really focus on InfoSight, right? And if you guys have been selling Nimble, this is a really easy discussion, right? Um, because it all fits into how we make VMware better. And it goes with a lot of the main themes that we, we've traditionally talked about. You know, support has been obviously the, one of the, the big pieces of, of Nimble, right? About how we can resolve almost 90% of the cases automatically, how we help customers get directly into level three support. But again, I'd mentioned this, the advantage with DHCI is we do this across the full stack, right? So Nimble support will take that first call. They'll be able to support it as a solution across the entire stack, whether we're talking about storage, compute, or integration with, v with, with VMware, or even if certain networking options that we have. So that's very, that's big. Those are things that our competition, again, can't do. But then when you start looking at what we do from an analytical perspective, right? How we help proactively identify problems in a DHCI environment, we're again doing that across the full stack. So instead of having to go into, you know, if I have a noisy VM or I need to figure out, you know, again, where the prop, where the root cause is, um, DH, again, InfoSight is getting me that information automatically, right? So instead of having to go and solve that from a component level, right? I have all of that analytics being run across the full stack. And that's how we're making that VMware experience better. So the next thing I wanna talk about is application performance, right? I had mentioned this, right? This is a big reason why having that nimble backbone is a big differentiator against our competition. And this is where uh, traditional HCI has struggled, right? Is supporting those complex demanding workloads, you know, high-end databases or other applications that need that low latency access to storage. And the problem is when you look at traditional HCI, specifically here with vSAN, is that the entire solution is only strong as the weakest node, right? And this is because of the way they're architected, right? They spread data across the cluster. So if you have a node that becomes slow, it's gonna impact the entire solution. Likewise, if I have a drive failure, if I have a component failure, it's gonna impact performance. Because in DHCI we use Nimble, right? It is always flash. It is always fast because we're using Nimble all flash, right? And because we have all of those features within Nimble that we talked about, six nines of availability, we can sustain multiple failures and it's not gonna have any, we're not gonna have any disruption in performance. Even if we're upgrading software on the array, we're still gonna be running at that most optimal performance. So we've got that. And the other thing we've done is we've, you know, we've seen a lot of, we got some customers actually benchmark this against VxRail. And I'm gonna share an example with you a little later on, but what we've seen is DHCI in a lot of these examples is able to provide almost a 10X improvement in write latency. Um, and the result that we've seen because of this is it's allowing our customers to virtualize more applications, right? So the most demanding workloads that customers have um, you know, large scale repositories, you know, high end databases. Um, these are things that customers never thought they were able to do with HCI. Uh, but because of these advantages we bring to the table, um, they're able to do these things, um, you know, get, as I said, virtualize more applications. So the third point I want to talk about is around availability, right? This is a really key discussion to have because obviously this directly equates to a customer's ability to innovate, right? And you know, what I've seen is, you know, a lot of times this isn't a key area, um, but after a discussion to understand what this really means, a lot of customers have really changed their mind. So what, what's really important to understand is when we talk about things like vSAN, you know, they're gonna use this whole concept of what we call FTT or failures to tolerate, right? And this really means, you know, how many failures can occur before I'm gonna have some type of data loss? And so where it starts, kind of their, their first level is what they call FTT1, right? Which means if I'm in a vSAN or a VxRail environment, it's gonna re it requires three nodes, and this configuration is only going to protect against a single drive failure, right? This is something that no customer really should be doing, right? You know, any type of enterprise application, you know, they're not gonna wanna put their, their, their data at this type of risk, right? So when we look at where they would go next, right, that next level of availability, right, we call FTT2, 
this is where probably the minimal level that they're going to want to be at, right? Meaning that I can I'm capable at handling two simultaneous drive failures before I am at risk of data loss. But you see the problem here. I've had to double the amount of infrastructure that I need to be able to support this. So double the amount of server nodes, which doubles the amount of VMware licenses that I need to be able to support this. But consider this, right? If you had a customer that, say, had to reboot a node, had to take a node down for maintenance, at that point, they couldn't tolerate any other drive failures before they're at risk of data loss. There is kind of a, dry, a, a one, one, uh, one drawback with that. Now, the most optimal one is FTT3, right? Um, this is that configuration that's going to allow them to be able to tolerate those three type simultaneous drive failures, right? This is probably the recommended level for any type of enterprise application. But again, I've now had to add an additional node to be able to support that. One additional server, which drives one additional, again, more VMware licenses and whatnot. Now, when I compare this and what we can do with DHCI, this is really where it starts making DHCI really look attractive is that we can provide that highest level of availability but we can do it in our smallest configuration meaning one nimble array and two servers right so i significantly reduce the amount of infrastructure that i need to be able to support that highest level right but i'm doing it at a significantly lower cost but the other thing to look at in all of these types of scenarios right this is supporting the same exact workload right which brings back to the original point right Availability is important, right? It's tied directly to the customer's ability in, to innovate and drive transformation, right? You know, no customer is going to want to put out a solution that only supports a single drive failure. But again, we see it. And this is a key area that when you're competing against VxRail, you want to be able to you want to be able to keep them honest, right? Um, a lot of times they're going to put configurations out in FTT1 and FTT2. It's our job to make sure we we make sure the customer understands um, what are the risks? What are the pros and cons? And that really can really help really open up the discussion around DHCI and, and the benefits. All right, so point four is just around general storage efficiency. And we had an example recently in the field where we had a customer that was looking at 95 terabytes. And when we looked at what vSAN actually would take to be able to support that, you see what it took. 95 terabytes of storage resulted in again, almost 17 nodes and over 400 SSDs. When we actually did it, compare that and what it was going to look like in DHCI, um, it was the customer at first was actually really shocked. We were able to do this in only 7U and 360 fewer SSDs, right? In fact, if we had actually done larger SSDs, we would have been able to support this with 12 or 24 drives as well. And the reason is because of Nimble, right? We have a centralized storage array. It's a different architecture. Um, it allows us to drive performance even in the strongest configuration. So we don't have to compromise by adding in more nodes, right? Right, big advantage. And, it, and last thing, as you see, you can probably see from that, all of this comes back to cost, right? It means customers spend less money for similar, for, for more optimal performance uh, and higher level of availability. What we've seen is DHCI is roughly around a third more efficient than, uh, than, than VxRail from a CPU perspective is because we don't need our servers to act as a virtual storage array. That's why we have Nimble in the backbone. So all of the IO, all of the copies of data that I need to be able to support higher levels of those higher levels of, of availability, that all comes at a cost, right? Um, with DHCI, we have the Nimble do what it does best, and we allow our CPU to do what it what what it needs to do, which is drive application performance. We talked about the storage efficiency perspective, you know, roughly well over 300% more storage efficient. And all of this drive leads back to TCO. If I have fewer infrastructure, that means I have fewer licensing, fewer rack space, and the costs go on and on and on. So again, make sure VxRail is not selling on configurations. We want to be able to hold them honest so we can have this discussion.